probably was mentioned to you last week. I don't know. I wasn't here to listen to Father Terry. But um, I probably mentioned to you that, that this year will be the year of, of the Gospel of Mark. And today we read chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. So we start reading the Gospel of Mark. It will be um, every Sunday because Mark's Gospel is very short and we go through Christmas and some of those things. So other things from Luke's gospel and so on will become intermingled. But the gospel of Mark starts this way. The beginning. It's the beginning of the story. The beginning of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So that announcement he makes right away, this is what the story is about. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And gospel means good news. He starts off by quoting Isaiah. This is the quote. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Well, on earth, did they start out in the desert? Why weren't they on this downtown, in front of the temple, or in the shopping center, or someplace where, where this voice could make the announcement? Why weren't they in front of the, the courthouse, or city hall, or, or someplace like that? But it began in his story with John in the desert. And people went out to see him, to hear him, and to respond to his call to conversion, to change of heart. It sounds like in this story here, because I think they maybe idealized it a little bit, that everybody was going out there. Probably not. But there were enough people that were going out to John who were looking for something, who were searching for something to fill the void in their hearts and to help them address the possibility of, of overcoming the turmoil of the, Roman, of the Romans there and, and the political intrigue and, and the hypocrisy of the temple um, and, and, and the priest and so on there and so on. They were, they were looking for something to make a change. And John was saying, you need to change. The change has to begin as, as a change of heart, a change from within, a conversion the way you look at things. In the context of that, John in the desert and away from, from everything else, here we are, St. Joseph Church, Bartstown, Kentucky. We're not in the middle of a shopping center. Right now, all we have to remind us that, that the season is leading toward the birth of Jesus are two lighted candles, or Advent candles a little purple around the church. And one little tree in the rear of church with the um, so-called angels on it, angel tree. When we come here, we're sort of like leaving the outside world, going from downtown to the desert. We're away from all that and hearing the words of John saying, Repent. Change your hearts. Change your hearts. See the things in a little different light as we enter our lives, or as we continue our lives, within the hustle and bustle of the everyday world, remembering that it's through us that the word of Jesus can be spread. Us. In our response to the words of John, our response to, to, to the church and the sacraments, our response to our tradition, asking us to hear and be faithful to what has been delivered to us from our past and from the stories that we read during this Christmas time of introducing Jesus into the world. You know, when I was a little boy, um, I was a little boy once upon a time, um, but we used to, on, on December the 8th every year, in those days of prehistory, um, when in Louisville, the only shopping center in Louisville at that time was 4th Street, between Broadway and, and, 
Main Street. And all of the stores, if any, any quality and so on, were, were all there. And, and we always, as a family, on the December the 8th, because we didn't have to go to school on December the 8th in those days, because we went to Catholic school, and that was a holy day, and we didn't go to school on holy days, so that was our Christmas shopping day as a family. And so we all went downtown. We had a meeting place, and everybody had their little list of things to do as they wandered around. You know, think of the memories of those things. Of course, I think of all of the, the so-called five and ten cent stores that we had in those days. Five and dime was, was a big thing for us children who didn't have much money to spend. And that's where we went to do our shopping. Well, Mother, we hoped, would go to Stewart's or Kaufman's or one of the, the big stores and get us some neat stuff. But um, as we wandered around, what are some of the memories that I have of Fourth Street in the 19, late 1930s, early 1940s. First of all, it was crowded at that time. There were lots of folks wandering up and down. Um, and the things that I remember, things like, in those days, they, they had near Guthrie and 4th and Guthrie. I don't think you all would be aware of that now. There's, I think they built the J.C. Penney thing there. But in my childhood, there was the old courthouse, or the old post office was there, which they tore down. But in front of that property, they had this big, long tables, and these guys there, and then they, they, they were there collecting dimes. They called it the Mile of Dimes. Mile of Dimes, and these, this Mile of Dimes was, was to leave just one dime here, leave, leave your, your, your pocket change in the form of dimes, and that will be a way to help people who are impoverished or people who are in need, and civic clubs, were the ones that sponsored this type of thing, as I recall. Also, a thing that continues today that was there was the bell ringers, the little buckets, the little red buckets, and then and, and the, the, the bell ringers there collecting for the, for the needy, for the poor. Uh, and just the little tingle bell there, in the midst of all the turmoil of shopping and, and the glitz of of Christmas and the displays and the windows and so on. Um, the little bitty things. There were the things that were saying somehow there's hope coming into the world. Those days we were talking about the Great Depression. People didn't have much. And the need for, for, for people to be, to be helped along the way. Well, this, that was then and this is now. And you know, when I go to Kroger's, and there's the bell ringer there. Some of them are from, from our own community that volunteer to do that, and they're really proud of those that, that do that. They spend, spend the time, just the little, but the, the little bell that you can barely hear. And now that I don't hear very good, I can hardly hear at all. <laughs> but the little bell, you know, reminding us you know, of the world in which we live that's not perfect. Far from perfect. Maybe it gets us far, far away from the, the turmoil that happens in, in, in the political things of the world or the, the wars and the, and, and the refugees and all those kinds of things seem so distant. But the little bell is reminding us. You know, we live in a world in which we are to bring the presence of Jesus and his good news. Somehow or another, the desert is right here in our midst. We don't have to go to the desert to find the desert. The desert is here. And I think that's why during these four weeks of preparation during Advent that we refrain from putting the glitz of Christmas in the church. We start out with a little candle, then two candles, then three candles, and ultimately when we come to the cusp of Christmas, four candles. Simple decorations until the very last moment. Then after we prepared ourselves, after we thought about the need personally for conversion, then we're ready to say, may the birth of Jesus happen within our hearts, within our community. You know, it, it's, it's all kind of simple, and it's there, and it's there year after year, but how often we walk right by the little bell ringer, we walk right by the angel tree, I think there's some 27 angels still on the tree back there, by the way, um, that, that need to be adopted. 
or we walk by the angel trees and, and that uh, uh, that are in in the, in the super in the markets and so on, and they keep through television and so on, reminding us of, of these things. And you know, this year with the the Courier Journal making a, a notice of the eviction of people living under the bridges under I-65 in Louisville reminds us, you know, the desert is here in our midst. The need for somehow or another the hearts of people to recognize that we're brothers and sisters as God's creatures and God's creation. And this is part of the preparation. When we think of John the Baptist in the desert saying, change your hearts. We need a conversion. We need to repent. Not in the sense of having a, a list of things that I disobeyed my mother or something, um, but repent in the sense of recognize you know, that we're in this world together and that the desert is pretty tough sometimes. Not only for, for the people that we look to that, that, that can tear at our heartstrings, but it's tough for the rest of us too. You know, there's a lot of a lot of things that go on within the hearts of, of those people who maybe are covered over with glitz. Or they are depressed, or they're sad, or they're fearful, or they're wondering, you know, how they're going to survive. And here we are. A couple of candles, some purple stuff, and maybe we need to listen closer to the tinkle of the bell ringing, reminding us that we are followers of Jesus. That this was the beginning of the story. We're now continuing that story in time. Once again, with the coming of Advent, we begin telling the story again with the same message. That each of us needs not to look at somebody else, but to look within our own hearts to say, what can I do to change my ways? To have a little different attitude about how I am going to approach life as family, life as community, life in relationship to the, to the turmoil in the world around me, uh, what can I do to contribute to make it better? So I hope that when you go to Kroger's or wherever you go and, and there's a person ringing the bell, not so much that you have big checks to jump for, to stuff into the bucket, hope you can make a donation to them, that's fine, or to take them our remaining 27 angels off the tree back there. It would be nice to, to be able to say the people at 9 o'clock Mass on this Sunday, of, second Sunday of Advent wiped them all out so that the ones at 1130 won't have a chance at them. But the, you know, I hope that somehow or another we can all hear the tingle of that little bell in the wilderness reminding us of who we are as followers of Jesus and encouraging us to open our hearts to be better followers of this way to our own conversion and change of heart.